like a gymnast bum. He's busy. And a lot more spotty, added Gordon. Are you coming into the station, Thomas, to pick up some more jolly folk from the town? Stuff that, said Thomas. Hellfire. I'm Bruce. Bruce and Adrian again. With great difficulty. Fill us up, Mr. Water Tank. Said Thomas without moving his lips. <laughs> That's your share, Thomas, said the water tank. Unless you don't mind taking Gordon's. Okay, said Thomas, but easy on the bitter lemon. Right, I'm off to the sidings. Thomas looked forward to his daily trips to the sidings, even if it was a ruddy silly name for a pub. <laughs> As Thomas pulled up at the sidings, he saw Jeremy, the pink engine. <laughs> said Jeremy. There's no need to advertise, said Thomas. <laughs> then the fat controller walked onto the track. What's all this locomotion going on? He said grumpily. Mind your own business, you fat controller, said Thomas. And before you could say the train now standing, Thomas shot forward, running over the fat controller's finger, killing him instantly. Well, he was picking his nose at the time. Just then, Thomas spotted Annie and Clavabelle coming down the track. Cool! Look at the tender behind on that, said Thomas, scratching his guard back. Hmm, said Jeremy, I don't fancy mine much. Hey up, girls, leaned Thomas. Wanna come back to the buffet car for a few bevies or what? <laughs> oh, look out, Thomas, look out! You can pack that lock up straight away, said Jeremy. And threw a bucket of water over them. Uh oh, here comes PC Pullman. What's going on here, Thomas? Have you been drinking? <laughs> no, sir, said Thomas, and promptly threw up. But it all turned out well in the end. Jeremy went off to become a hairdresser, and Thomas was put back on the wagon and sent straight to the Betty Ford scrapyard.